Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selam. Ve Resulillah. Good afternoon everyone. I just basically wanted to address, um, you know, some of the issues that our community is facing here in Toronto. Uh, one of the problems that uh, that's uh, basically is uh, going on here is that there's a there's a serious problem in the Somali community here in Toronto. I'm sure you heard, but too many times you hear Somalis killing Somalis in Toronto. Now this problem has been happening for for years. Now we know that our Somali brothers, they have been involved, some of them, I'm not going to say all of them, but some of them, the youth, that have been involved in, you know, crimes, especially in the drug trade, you know, particularly in, uh, in Alberta, places like Edmonton, you know, Fort McMurray. You know, too many Somalis are killing each other over non-Islamic activities. And this is a serious issue. And uh, this is an issue that us Muslims, we must address. And that we must try our best to, to, to end this problem, right? Now... From what I know about the Somali community is that there was a, a lot of the Somalis migrated from Somalia to come to Canada because of the, the Somali uh, civil war that took place, I believe, in the early 90s. And um, this Somali uh, civil war has made instability in the country. This has forced many Somalis to migrate in different parts of the world. A lot of them went to UK, places like Norway. You know, a lot of them went to Australia, all over the world. There's Somalis everywhere. Now in Toronto, we have a large Somali community, and uh, particularly in the west of Toronto, there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of Somalis living there, and a lot of the violence took place in the west side of Toronto when it comes to the Somali community. A lot of the crimes took place in the west side of Toronto, although some also takes place in the east side of Toronto. And we must address this issue because the Imams are not really um, addressing this issue. And I believe that it is the responsibility of the Imams to address this issue and to try to put a stop to it. And to try to find out the causes of, of what, why Somalis are are killing one each other, right? Now, we must know that there is a campaign right now within the black community to to reduce basically the basically they want to reduce uh, the population, right? There is a, a massive campaign right now to reduce the world's population. And I personally believe that they're going to start off with the black people. Now, we all know that in Islam, music is haram, period. There should be no uh, arguments about that. The scholars have mentioned that Music in Islam is haram, period. However, as humans, it is, 
it's basically like yeah a lot of the of us will fall into it somehow you know we'll fall into listening to music although we must make it clear or we must believe that music is haram now some somalis are suffering from what is called inferiority complex so basically uh what happens is when some of them come to canada they want to fit in with some of them want to fit in with uh you know like the black community for example like you know like the jamaicans and the you know people from the caribbean and you know what i mean and a lot of them they want to like start imitating rappers and things like that and what we must be aware is that the music industry particularly the hip-hop industry has been designed to destroy the black community and we must know that uh the the like the record the record label executive they purposely want to promote violence in the hip hop music in order to in order to to promote more violence crime and, crime and violence so that black people would kill one another now the music industry is a multi billion dollar industry so we must ask ourselves why is the music why is music a multi billion dollar industry music is a multi billion industry because it has a lot of influence in our society everywhere we go we hear music we go to a shopping mall we go to a barber shop you know what i mean everywhere you go you hear music right so music is an integral integral part of of a lot of our life because we hear it everywhere although we know that it's haram in islam and that if you were living under an islamic state we wouldn't have we wouldn't music would be banned right so so music has a lot of influence right and it has been documented that a lot of the music have subliminal subliminal satanic messages and that backtracking is is a form of hypnotism and because backtracking is a form of hypnotism there's a lot of hidden messages that is that is stored inside a like a track right and a lot of times these messages are satanic and it will basically affect your subconscious mind so basically what happens is when you start listening to music you will somehow think negative thoughts like maybe stabbing somebody or robbing somebody or like you know what i mean just doing some type of crime or whatever now because a lot of us as the somalis they you know a lot of them suffer from inferiority complex meaning like they they think they will have low self esteem and they want to fit in with the the non muslims the black non muslims because they will think that they think some of them think that the the non, the the black non muslims is better than them so they will start imitating them dressing like them and and the islamic identity they will try to put it aside they will still say some of them will still say they're muslim and they pray but a lot of the way they dress and they, they act basically they're trying to fit in with the the black kofar you know they will some of them will feel that the black kofar is better than them and that's how they suffer from inferiority complex so because a lot of them suffer from inferiority complex they will they will basically imitate and and the the ways of the kofar right and this is a problem in, in the in the muslim community that zanantum a lot of the zahara yuzahiruna ya'idhukum a 
Allora de non Muslim, allora de Somalis will, will try to imitate the non Muslim. And this is even a hadith. This is even a hadith that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam, he, he prophesies that the, some of the Muslim was well, uh, some of the non, some of the Muslims will try to imitate the kuffar, even that if they were going to go to inside of a lizard, they would they would follow. Let me see if I can find the hadith on the Google. So Abu Sayyid al Qudi reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said you would tread the same path as was trodden by those before you inch by inch and step by step so much that if they had entered into the hole of a lizard uh, you would follow them and this also. We said Allah's Messenger do you mean the Jews and the Christians? By your words, those before you, he said, who else? Then two religious groups. So this is a uh, hadith in Sahih Muslim, uh, 2669, book 47, hadith 7. Right? So we could see that some of us Muslims want to imitate the non-Muslims. Because some of us think that the non-Muslims is better than us. And that has to do with the fact that we live in, in a society that is, is predominantly it's a kuffar society and there's more kuffar Muslim as Muslims were a minority living here, right? So a lot of us will will, will imitate the ways of ways of the kuffar. So because a lot of the black people, some of the black people, they're killing one another, right? Because black people are already killing one another, you know, in in North America, in every major city. In North America, in every single ghetto, black people are killing one another. So because a lot of the Somalis, Somalis don't want to imitate the ways of the the, the black kufar, they will also think that this is this is like the style, and and the Somalis they will kill each other, in the name of what, in the name of drugs, alcohol some girl non-islamic issues you know and also somali just like just like the rest of the other africans they suffer from kabil tribalism right so this is an issue that we must address and that we must try our best to educate people that there is a plot to to reduce the world's population and and basically, they want to start off with black people. They want to eliminate black people. And they will try many alternative ways to do that. And, and one of the major ways is to brainwash, brainwash them with, with the music, with the hip-hop music. So now the music has become a form of hypnotism. And then they will basically... And then now what happens is... Uh, the music will become like some form of magic and then you know some of the lyrics that's in the music will become a form of magic and that will basically hypnotize hypnotize people you know and there's even a hadith about how some speeches is kind of like magic let me see if I can find the hadith as well. In the Google. Right here. So, so there's a hadith that uh, is narrated by Abdullah ibn Omar that two men came from the east and addressed the people 
wonder at their eloquent speeches on that Allah's Messenger وسلم, said some eloquent speech is, is as effective as magic this is a hadith in Sahih al-Muslim number 5767 book 76 hadith 81 so we could see that you know the last awesome speech is all like magic so a lot of the music that we hear it has a lot of evil messages and because a lot of us some of us are indulged in listening to music we will become seduced by it hypnotized by it and somehow our it will have an effect on our, our behavior and that's why uh as a muslim uh, we must try our best to stay away from music and we must not adapt the way of that of the kuffar and the muslim leaders must constantly preach uh that the importance of not imitating the non-muslim you know and this is the reason why a lot of the crimes take place in the somali community because a lot of the somali they want to imitate the the, the, the black kofar right some of them suffer from inferiority complex and because some of them suffer from inferiority complex they want to imitate the black kofar they want to start listening to their music and imitate the way they act and even in in, the, in toronto here where i'm living you have in the black community you have bloods and the crips you know black people are killing each other in jane and fitch some you know before there was a war between men men's them from jane and finch versus men's them from Merksdale. all in the name of blood and the crips you know what i mean so this is like nonsense you know this is something that started in in la and now it's just spreading into the american and canadian ghettos so this is based on ignorance right whenever we turn away from our religion then we will Im imitate the kuffar it will and and then what happens is a muslim will kill another muslim and in the name of what in the name of drugs alcohol you know non-islamic activities you know and this is something that we must address and we must try our best to put an end to that and put an end to that you know so we must try uh, uh, to advocate uh, this issue and try to put a stop into it now as muslim we should not be drug dealers a lot, a lot of most another issue that's happening in the muslim community is that you got some muslim who are indulged in selling drugs you know some muslims don't want don't want to like they refuse to go and get a job you know they refuse to go to school you know they 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 refuse to make money halal you know what i mean a lot of some of them they, they hide you know what i mean because of course they're selling drugs and and you know they're corrupting the society you know as muslims we should be the one ending drugs you know we should be the one cleaning the society but what happens is some Muslim instead of cleaning the society they become selfish of themselves and they just think about the fast money and then they sell they decide to sell crack and things like that it's corrupting the society you know what I mean and this is a, a problem you know what I mean this is like a reason why someone is killing each other because they're deciding to imitate the black people from the Caribbean and now they want to feel like they try to fit in 
not knowing that you just like destroying yourself. You know what I mean? There is no reason why a Muslim should be killing another Muslim. There, there's absolutely no justification for that. There should be no reason why a Muslim. There should be no. I mean, this is it's not permissible to do that. It's not permissible for a Muslim to kill another Muslim. You know, there's there's even like serious hadith about that. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it here. I'm looking for it. Let me see. Yeah, let me see here. Yeah, this is in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 93. It says, And whoever kills a believer intentionally, his punishment is hell. He shall abide in it. And Allah will send his wrath on him and curse him and prepare for him a painful chastisement. Right? So, here you go, man. You know, we should, we should not, you know, be, it's not permissible to kill a believer. You know what I mean? This is like, this is what happens, man. You know, when you live, live in, in a kafar society, because the kafar has dominance over us, we get influenced by them, their way of life. And we just, you know, we just copy what they do. So because black people are killing one another, then the Somalis are doing the same thing. It has to do with inferiority complex. You know, some of them feel like the kofar is better than them. But then they will imitate the way they act, right? So, it's not about educating people. We must try our best to educate, you know, uh, people. You know, if you know someone who's involved in the drug industry, just remind them that, look, man, this is haram, man. What are you doing? How are you going to face all your career? So, you know, you'll be questioned about how you made your money, how you live your life. You know what I mean? We must, you know, try to remind one another about the importance of fulfilling Islam and following Islam properly and to make our money halal. As Muslims, we should be the one. We should be the one advocating. Uh, uh, we should be against drugs. We should be against alcohol. We should be the advocates of living in a society that is drug free and alcohol free right it is sad that many of us we decide to be involved with drugs and waste off money on drugs a lot of the muslims have lots of money and instead of coming together building communities building massages coming together some instead of doing that it's sad to say that some muslims are selfish and they just want to think about themselves. And rather, if they have a thousand dollars in their hand, rather to give five hundred dollars to a charity or trying to build some type of Islamic institution, they would rather use that five hundred money, that five hundred dollars, and waste it on drugs, right? And this is the reason why what happens is when your money is haram, you will do haram things with it. Because the way you got this money was fast, right? So this is what happens when you make your money haram, right? So I don't want to like really go too far about this. But uh, I just wanted to highlight some of the reasons why the, some of the problems in, in, in the Muslim community, particularly the Somali community, you know, and I see that there's too much killings happening, you know, too much killings. And it's senseless killing, you know, senseless killing. And the imam of the masajids, they're not really addressing this issue. We don't really have real proper Muslim leaders in the Muslim community. We don't have that, you know. The Muslim community in Toronto is so divided. And, 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 and at the same time, a lot of them, a lot of the imam don't really speak the truth. You know what I mean? 
So this is why, like, it 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 is time for the Muslim leaders to step up and 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 and, and really take this issue seriously. And and you know, people must try to to uh, try to end this because this is an ongoing problem, and nobody wants to really talk about it and address this issue. So let me know what you think. You know, leave a comment on my uh, on my page. Um, if you, I'm basically looking for people, sincere Muslim, who I can work with, in order to try to end this problem. So if you want to work with me, then let me know what you think. You know what I mean? And uh, hopefully we can come together, and and, and as Muslim and and try to do positive things for the community. Because I'm all about trying to do positive things in the community. I'm an advocate against drugs. I'm an advocate against alcohol. I'm an advocate against all forms of, you know, street street activities. I've no I know too much people that have died on the streets, Muslim and non Muslims alike. So the, I will not I, I I distance myself from people who are indulged with drugs. I don't want to be involved with Muslim who are dealing with drugs because it could be a, a bad influence for me because at one time I was doing those things. And by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have been able to stop living that life. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment. And uh, if I have said something wrong, just let me know. You know what I mean? Let me know what you think. I Subhanaka la kuma wa bi'amtika. Ashadu la ilaha ila anta. Ashtakhu la uzubilaiki.